As Hurricane Melissa bears down on Jamaica with unprecedented ferocity, a critical question looms. What happens when a Category 5 storm collides with some of the Caribbean's steepest terrain? Could Jamaica's Blue Mountains turn a powerful hurricane into a truly historic event? Could the island's uplifted geology amplify Melissa's rainfall and transform wind-driven damage into cascading slope failures and debris floods? Some scientists say the answer is yes. The island's wild topography may not merely withstand the storm. It may supercharge its impacts. Melissa is no ordinary hurricane. Satellite and reconnaissance observations show a textbook major hurricane with a sharply defined eye roughly 10 nautical miles, about 18 kilometers, across and an extensive cold cloud shield. Analyses place the central pressure near 910 millibars and sustained winds in the range of 165 miles per hour, roughly 265 kilometers per hour. That intensity makes Melissa one of the rare Category 5 systems of the season, a phenomenon not seen in two decades, and models suggest it may rival or exceed the intensity of some of Jamaica's most damaging historical storms. That meteorological muscle will be pressed directly against one of the Caribbean's most dramatic geology-driven landscapes, where relief, rock type, faulting and drainage geometry conspire to turn extreme precipitation into catastrophic geomorphic change. The mechanism by which terrain amplifies a hurricane's destructive power begins with orographic lifting. Jamaica's core topography is the product of sustained tectonic compression and uplift. Oblique crustal convergence and block rotation have folded and forced rock upward, constructing a steep, teardrop-shaped massif that dominates the eastern half of the island. This uplifted block is the Blue Mountains and its satellite ranges. Blue Mountain Peak rises to roughly 2,256 metres, about 7,402 feet, above sea level, and its high ground begins only nine miles, about 15 kilometres, from the shoreline. In practical terms, that means air masses laden with tropical moisture encounter very steep slopes almost immediately after moving on shore. There is little horizontal fetch over low ground to dissipate gusts or to shed water slowly. Air is forced upward at high rates. The result is intense condensation and very high local rainfall rates. The atmosphere cannot hold the moisture when it is pushed aloft so abruptly, and the storm's rain bands will wring water out of the air with near-mechanical efficiency. Underlying lithology magnifies the problem. Much of Jamaica's upland is underlain by soluble limestone and interbedded volcaniclastic sediments, sandstone and shale. These rock assemblages are highly fractured from tectonic stress, and the soluble limestone yields a classic karst landscape with caves, sinkholes, and subsurface conduits. Karst systems allow rainfall to disappear into the subsurface where conditions permit, but they offer little capacity when precipitation rates overwhelm infiltration. In many high elevation sectors, soils are thin, often only a few metres thick, and vegetation is adapted to fast drainage conditions. When torrential rain arrives, the thin soil mantle can become saturated in hours. Once poor pressures rise, slope strength plummets, and the probability of shallow rotational slides and shallow rapid debris flows increases dramatically. The geometry of Jamaica's watersheds compounds the hazard. Valleys cut quickly into steep V-shaped profiles with little room for floodplains. Where hill slopes drop abruptly into confined channels, runoff converts into fast-moving torrents that accelerate down steep gradients. Those channels act as funnels, concentrating runoff from large upslope areas into narrow corridors. 
The hydrodynamic consequence is rapid onset flash flooding, flows that rise from base stage to full bank or overbank in a matter of tens of minutes to a few hours. The sediment load of these flash floods is often coarse. Studies of mountainous tropical rivers show that storms tend to export gravel, cobbles and boulders, as well as sand and organic debris. When slope failure occurs simultaneously with peak rainfall, debris flows can mobilise huge volumes of material that travel far beyond the initial scar, entraining water and increasing flow mass and momentum. Past Jamaican tropical storms illustrate the dynamic interaction between steep topography and intense rainfall. In major events, researchers have mapped hundreds of landslide scars along relatively short mountain corridors. Debris flows are frequently the dominant mass-wasting process, and individual failures can reach lengths in the order of 150 metres or more and carry tens of thousands of cubic metres of material. Such moving masses of saturated soil and rock possess extraordinary destructive potential. They can scour vegetation, displace channel geometry, and deliver coarse sediment to coastal depositional systems. The coastal deltas of major rivers, repeatedly fed by storm-borne sediment, bear witness to this churn. Deltas that have accreted a metre or more of sediment from successive hurricanes testify to the long-term erosional effectiveness of these events. There is also a tectonic dimension to the risk. Jamaica occupies a region of complex plate interactions with significant faulting and block uplift. The rocks making up the Blue Mountains and adjacent ranges are crisscrossed by faults and fracture networks that pre weaken rock masses. Uplifted blocks are often internally stressed and contain pre-existing planes of weakness where weathering and root penetration can exploit cracks. When heavy rainfall elevates poor water pressure, these preconditioned planes can fail quickly. In some cases, failure surfaces exploit weathered bedrock horizons or bedding planes within interbedded sedimentary sequences, producing translational slides that can detach large slabs of material. Where volcanic elastics are juxtaposed with limestone, contrasts in permeability and strength can create localized perch water tables and shear zones, priming slopes for failure during extreme precipitation pulses. Hurricane. Melissa's particular meteorological character augments these geological susceptibilities. Melissa's compact eye and strong eye wall convection concentrate the most intense rainfall and highest wind speeds within a relatively narrow radius. That means the region of maximum precipitation will move inland along a compact corridor rather than being spread more uniformly across the island. The eyewall's spiral rain bands produce repeated bursts of intense rainfall over the same slopes in a short temporal window, a process meteorologists call training. Training over steep terrain is a recipe for both saturation and progressive slope failure. A slope weakened by an early burst of rain is more likely to fail under later, even heavier bursts. Moreover, Melissa's strong low-level inflow will push marine air up the mountain flanks, enhancing orographic enhancement of precipitation along the windward slopes. In practice, that implies extremely high local rainfall rates in the eastern highlands and along the south-facing slopes where the storm is expected to make initial landfall. Wind-driven effects, too, feed into the geomorphic response. Strong onshore winds can accelerate moisture transport and enhance evaporation from canopy surfaces, but more critically, they produce tree uprooting and canopy damage. Uprooted trees remove root reinforcement and surface vegetation that otherwise help stabilize shallow soils. Once roots fail, the cohesion provided by vegetation vanishes and slopes become dramatically more susceptible to slide initiation. 
In many tropical mountain systems, the removal of forest cover, whether gradual or instantaneous, is tightly linked to slope instability under extreme rainfall. Thus, wind and rain act in tandem. Wind primes the slopes by degrading vegetative anchors. Rain delivers the final hydraulic trigger. The island's karstic and cave networks introduce another hazard vector that is less visible but equally important. Where subsurface conduits are extensive, heavy recharge from intense storms can generate sudden rises in cave and sinkhole water levels. Rapid pressurization of subsurface voids can cause collapses or sinkhole growth at the surface, sometimes initiating or reactivating slope failures adjacent to cavities. In regions where tunnels concentrate groundwater flow into discrete outlets, the sudden discharge of subsurface water can add to surface runoff pulses, amplifying flow rates in channels downstream. Such coupled surface-subsurface dynamics are notoriously difficult to predict and can lead to localized but severe geomorphic change in the immediate aftermath of a major storm. Another crucial element is sediment budgeting and channel stability. Repeated intense storms progressively alter channel beds and slopes, creating a cyclic pattern of incision and aggradation. After a major rainfall event, channels often contain thick deposits of cobbled sand that alter flow hydraulics, raising base levels and increasing floodplain inundation potential during subsequent storms. In particular, large landslides that deposit huge volumes of debris in a valley can dam channels transiently. When such a natural dam breaches, it can generate a catastrophic outburst flood that surpasses the original flow in peak discharge and destructive capacity. Given Jamaica's narrow valleys and steep gradients, these dam breach scenarios are a credible component of the hazard landscape during and after Melissa. Coastal interactions close the loop. The sediment that mountains deliver to the coast after a storm changes nearshore bathymetry. Rapid sedimentation can steepen seabeds near river mouths and modify wave and surge dynamics locally. During a large hurricane, waves and surge interact with this rapidly changing nearshore topography, sometimes creating unexpected patterns of erosion and deposition. For an island where beaches and low-lying coastal margins are narrow, even modest changes in bathymetry can alter how storm surge propagates into bays and river mouths, affecting the delivery pathways of sediment-laden floods into the sea. Taken together, Jamaica's steep relief, fractured and variable lithology, thin soils, cast plumbing and confined drainage networks form a tightly coupled system in which a very strong hurricane becomes a primary driver of geomorphic change. Hurricane Melissa will not simply inundate lowlands or topple trees, it will interact with an island landscape that has been sculpted by tectonics and rain into steep, fragile equilibria. The storm's concentrated eyewall convection, intense sustained winds, and repeated heavy bands of rain are likely to cause rapid saturation, widespread shallow slope failure, deep-seated translational slides where bedrock is weathered along bedding planes and fast-moving debris flows that carry large clasts and huge volumes of sediment down valleys. If historical analogues serve as a guide, the Blue Mountains and adjacent highlands will record scars across their drainage basins, freshly exposed bedrock, new depositional fans at valley mouths, and dramatically altered channel geometries. The geomorphic fingerprints of Melissa are likely to be both immediate and long lived, with rivers and coastal deltas bearing the sedimentary signature of a major mountain rainfall interaction for years to come. Ultimately, the risk is not simply that Melissa is powerful. 
It is that Jamaica's unique geology makes powerfully raining storms into extraordinarily efficient landscape remodelers. The island's beauty is inseparable from its danger. Uplift and faulting have created relief that generates rain and channels it into destructive power. When a modern major hurricane like Melissa arrives, it will drive processes that have been operating across millennia into a single violent episode of erosion, transport and deposition, a geological event observed in real time. In this light, Jamaica during Melissa becomes a natural laboratory for the interplay of tectonics and extreme weather. The island's mountains will do what mountains always do in storms, extract water from the atmosphere, concentrate it, and channel it into kinetic work. The scientific question is not whether Melissa will change the landscape, it will, but how the specific geometries and rock architectures of Jamaica will shape the form and scale of that change. Observations collected during and after the storm rapid mapping of landslide scars, sediment yields measured in rivers, and surveys of channel morphology will quantify how a single tropical cyclone can accelerate long-term landscape evolution on a tectonically active Caribbean island. If you found this deep dive into Jamaica's wild geology and Hurricane Melissa's power insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and be sure to tap that hype icon to help this story reach a wider audience. Every click helps more people discover the real science behind nature's most extreme forces.